What's up divas and what's up, what's up divos? It's your girl April and today's video is going to be a real talk video. This one is going to feature my latest experience at the job place. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for this video. And as always, if you want to go ahead and email me your life situation or need some advice from us here on my channel, then go ahead and email to me at Muffin is my lover is 2012 at gmail.com and put in the subject line real talk. So let's get on to Real Talk Wednesdays. Mm. All right, ladies and gents. So I decided to do a real top talk it a real talk topic on my latest experience at the job place. Um, so I will get back to normal um, next week because I do have a couple that I need to go ahead and get out there, but this is a real talk advice experience. So I'm gonna need this from you ladies and gents, you guys out there. So this past Friday, which was the 21st of November, um, I'm just going to start off like this. Me and my daughter, who's pregnant, Tatiana, we work together. She actually got the job through me about four months ago. I've been there for eight months myself. Now, I am the administrator of the office. Um, I've been promoted twice. Well, actually, yeah, promoted twice, um, raised, given a raise twice. So I really enjoy my job. It's a really small, privately owned business. There's about 11 of us there. Um, there's a satellite office, which is like 30 minutes away. There's probably like 10 people there. Um, but my two ex-bosses are actually the best of friends. They're older guys. They've been through a lot together, but basically they're the best of friends. It's casual dress code. You guys see me posting up pictures on Instagram all the time. So it's not like you have to get dressed up, dressed up, but I loved where I worked at. You know, it was Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4 or 9 to 4 whenever I got in there. Um, same thing for Tati. Tati was my assistant as well as she was my boss's assistant. So anyway, um, I'm going to just change the names of these characters. So my boss's name is Sam. We're going to say Ryan, excuse me, Ryan. And the other one's um, name is Bruce. So they're both owners together. And Bruce hired his own blood brother to work with us about a week and a half ago in the office. Now, mind you, Bruce's brother has been going through some personal things. He's been taking care of them. My duty, as was told by Ryan, that I am to listen in on these calls. I have my own office. However, the trainers are in my office. There's three trainers that are in my particular office. And then there's the floor. So there's two doors, my boss's door, my door, and then the floor where the salespeople are at and Tati. So it's my duty to make sure that they're doing their particular calls correctly. They don't go over or exceed no more than 30 minutes. Sometimes they do, which is no big deal, but you need to stay at topic with the customers and inform them of the program that we are offering. Okay, so Bruce's brother, he had been here for a week and a half and instead of just talking to the customers about the program, he's carrying on long overdrawn conversations like if me and you were on the phone talking about, hey girl, what's up? Mm, yeah, I like blueberries and stuff. And when I say blueberries, that's one of the things he mentioned to the customers. It just, it's a long overdrawn story about what he talks with the customers. It's not even work related, it's not program related. So. You have to speak with this one particular customer for six weeks, once a week for 30 minutes a week until you get the program that they need done, you get the proposals done, and you get the work that they need done. So it's mandatory that you speak to them for six weeks. You're just collecting six weeks of information, and instead of being on the phone with the customer for like a few hours, we just break it down to like 20, 30 minutes weekly for six weeks. Because some people don't want to be on the phone with you for two and a half, three hours. So instead of him just speaking with the customers about the program, he's just talking about life in general. What he been up to, what they been up to, how they like this, how they like that, how he like this, how he like that. So. I did um, what I was supposed to do. I went, instead of doing what I was supposed to do, I actually went to Bruce, the co-owner, and spoke to him. You know, I said, hey, can you kind of help your brother out because he's not staying on topic, he's going off topic. His in turn is, what do you know about any of this program? I basically, I've helped you guys run it and I'm in there five, five days a week listening to them and I have the booklet of it. And um, yeah, I should know. This is not what I'm saying, but I'm just saying, Bruce, 
I'm just listening on his calls, and I'm hearing what he's saying. He's not on topic. He's not talking about the program. He's talking about life things, what he likes to do on the weekends, what things he likes to eat, and things of that nature. And he's not staying on topic. So, you know, me and Bruce and Ryan are like, we were like this. Me and my two bosses, we were like this. We were so close and so cool, you know. It was just like a laid-back atmosphere. I never could imagine this to happen to me. So, Bruce got offended because I guess it's his blood brother. And I just continued to inform him what was the issue. Well, you don't know anything about the program. And I'm kind of taking offense to this, but not really because my emotions are taking control. Like, I'm starting to feel, like, warm inside and teary-eyed. But I'm trying to just, like, calm him down. Like, you know, Bruce, I'm not trying to pick at him because I said pick at him because he said on several occasions during that conversation that I was picking on his brother because I was telling him what he was doing incorrectly. Now, mind you, when I'm when you pick on somebody, don't you have to go to that particular person and pick on them? Not go through somebody and pick on them. You gotta like go to that particular person and nitpick or pick at them. Picking at somebody is like bullying to me. That's what I, I use as a term, like a bullying term. That's a bullying term. So I'm not really sure about how I could go about picking on him when I'm going to you, the boss, the owner, you're his employer and asking you to supervise him and help him get through this so that he could be successful. But I guess being successful is not their main concern, just getting the custom, customer's money is. So he kept on screaming in my face and I just continually told him I'm not picking on your brother. After like six times of you telling me I'm picking on your brother and screaming in my face, telling me I don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know what I'm doing, this is his brother, blah, blah, blah. You know what I said? I said, I'm done. I'm going to go back in my office. I'm done. And I got up and I slammed the door behind me. As soon as I got up and left and slammed the door behind me, my office is right next door. Here comes Bruce running right behind me. Oh, you quit? You quit? Good. Yelling behind me in my ear, you quit, you quit, good. I never said I quit. I said I'm done. We need, I'm done explaining to you because I'm not going to let you sit there and scream in my face. Like just upset at ease and just, just being me. Now you're picking on me. That's what I'm starting to see. You're picking on me. So I just left it at that. He went off and you quit, good, whatever. I didn't say anything. I walked out of my office and back into his partner's office, Ryan. And I said to him, you know, can I talk to you for a minute? He sat me down. He said, what is going on? I don't know what's going on. He feels one way. He feels like you're picking on his brother because you're saying something. And I'm like, I'm not picking on his brother. I'm just trying to tell him what to do. I would never pick on his brother. I'm just doing what you asked me to do. That's all I'm doing. I'm trying to make sure that none of the customers complain and that things get done so that way you don't have any type of credit card chargebacks and we don't have any issues. Well, he feels like you're picking on his brother. You know his brother's been through things and they just became close once again and you know how blood is. And I said, and I totally understand that and I know all about what his brother's been through because me and Bruce have discussed this with one another. So I totally understand. Ryan says to me, well, April, don't worry about it. Just go home for the rest of the day. Now, mind you, it's 2 o'clock. It's like almost 2 o'clock. I don't get off until 4. Just go home for the day. You and Tati go home. Here's your checks. Because we got paid weekly. Here's your checks. Just go home for the day. And I'll call you later on. I'll try to calm Bruce down. I said, okay. So as I'm in the office with Ryan, just talking to him, I receive a text message on my phone from my daughter, Tati, that works on the outside of that door. You can tell Quinn. You can tell... Ryan, I quit. I don't know what this is all about, but as I open the door, I see other co-workers in my office. Now, mind you, we're the only African-American people in this office, okay? The rest of the people in the office are all Caucasian. Now, I see my friend, I see one of my friends, my co-worker, she's consoling my daughter, and I see another one consoling my daughter. I don't even know what's going on. I'm, like, oblivious to whatever's going on. I'm hearing from co-workers as well as my daughter. One of the sales girls who sits about 10 feet away from Tati, she's talking to another saleswoman, talking about, oh, she done slammed the door and now she wanna be in there crying. First of all, it wasn't nobody crying. My feelings was hurt, okay? My feelings was really hurt because like I said, I thought we were like this. I might have been a little teary-eyed and maybe I was crying a little bit, but I wasn't boo-hoo crying. So Tatiana heard this and said she didn't slam the door, she's not crying. So, we're going to call her Brittany. Brittany turns around her little swivel chair and says she was, she was crying. Tati then said to her, she wasn't crying and don't repeat yourself. 
did Britney turn around and say, your nigger mother did slam the door? Yes, did she say that? She said that to my child, but she called me the, the N word, okay? Not nigga, like what's up nigga? Like you know how dudes do in the street. Your nigger mother slammed the door. Yes, she did. So my daughter is like seven months pregnant and she's like, what the hell did you say, Brittany? I'm about to whip your ass in here. Brittany's response is, well, I'm not gonna fight you. And like I said, she slammed the door and Ryan will fire both of y'all before he fires me because he needs me. Now mind you, she's been there for over a year. She's been there way before me, but it doesn't matter. Bruce, the other co-owner who started all this drama, she did slam the door, Tati. Let's go, Brittany. And they ran out the office, jumped in the car and drove off. So I turned around to Ryan and said, did you just hear where Brittany just called me? You just called me the N-word. And what did Ryan say? What? This is his reaction. What? And everybody in the office was telling him, yeah, she did. I said, you know what? There's going to be a problem now. Here's Ryan's reaction. April, you and Tati go home. I'm so sorry. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to take care of this. I'll call you later tonight. First of all, I'm like pissed. You got everybody in the office. The other people, like I said, were the only two black people. They're apologizing her ill behavior. She ain't nowhere outside in the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Nowhere outside in the parking lot. I really don't know what I would have done if I would have seen her in the parking lot. I probably would have wanted to fly her head, okay? But she wasn't nowhere. Like I said, they drove off. You don't call people things like that. I have never in my life been called the N-word like that. Never. And especially at a place of business, a place of employment. So later on that night, he texts me, my boss, not the one that was screaming in my face, the other one. Apologizing, texts me, not calls, texts me and says, I apologize for Brittany's ill behavior. I will be having a chit chat with her on Monday. However, unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go because you threatened her. Okay, so because I threatened her, not Tati, but me. And I had, we, we're not going to go back and forth with via text message. So I called him and I said, are you serious, Ryan? How did I threaten her? I didn't threaten her. Well, because you said there's going to be a problem. There's going to be a fight. Excuse me. He said my words were there's going to be a fight. I said, no, my words were they're going, there's going to be a problem. That's what my words were. He said, well, it sounded like to me there's going to be a fight and we cannot have violence in our office. So unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go. I said, first of all, it is going to be a problem if you're going to have people running around calling people the N-words. That's what I said. It wasn't a threat because I didn't say her name, but like I did say it was going to be a problem. And I said, how could you call me up and, and terminate me and Tati and, and keep her? Who does that in the real world? I said, I need my job. I mean, I, you know, I like being there. I really did enjoy being there. He said, well, I'm going to talk to Bruce tomorrow because it's him that feels this way. April, I really want you to be there because I, I really care for you as a person. You're an awesome um, administrator. You just do everything in the office. It runs just strictly correctly with you. Okay, fine. I waited till Saturday. I get the text message. Sure enough, did he let me go or not? Yes, he did. He fired me and Tati and told me that I can meet him somewhere this week to get our check and to give him his office keys. And... My response was, well, I, I, I thank you for the opportunity. You have a blessed Thanksgiving. However, since I have had the entire day to think about the whole um, scenario and how it transpired, I may have been shockingly with my words of it's going to be a, um, a problem. However, what do you expect from someone to say once they have been called the N-word? I said, so I will be seeking legal representation. Did he threaten me? He threatened me, yeah. He really threatened me, not like physically, but I guess they think that all black people are on welfare. I don't, I'm, I just don't get it. He said, I will call welfare on you. I said, um, first of all, I'm not even on welfare. Second of all, what are you talking about? Third of all, no one threatened you because he said it, I threatened him, so now he's threatening me. Third of all, I didn't threaten you. I told you what I was going to do. So what you're doing is threatening me right about now. And I would suggest you stop because, for one, I adored you as a boss and a friend. And to see the, how this played out, 
um, Brittany was right. You would fire us before her because you need her. And she was correct. However, never in my life have I ever been called the N-word like that. It's total disrespect in the world that we live by and in today, everyone is treated equal. However, unfortunately, me and my daughter were not. What did he say? Well, um, uh, April G, I I tried to be nothing but a friend to you and your daughter. I never treated you wrongly. Can we just remain friends and just call it fair? I just left it at that. Now, first of all, I don't really understand where he got the welfare shit from because I'm not on welfare, okay? The hell? I don't understand that you think because I'm black or because my daughter is, is 18 and she's pregnant that we're on welfare. I, I just don't get it. But here's the thing. This girl is still working, and yes, she's still working at the place because I've been informed this by the other employees. She's still working. Me and my daughter are out of a job, and I've been called the N-word, and my daughter has been called, um, has been shouted it out, like, basically. I'm really not understanding what is up with the world today, like, for real. You know, how do you just think that you could just get away with shit like this and then go on with your life, you know what I mean? That is like the worst thing that you can call a black person coming from any race besides a black person. Like, it's not cool to call each other that as a black people of black people and black people, but it's really bad when you are stressing the ER at the end and it's coming from another race other than black. It's sad that it's almost 2015 and there are still racist people out there in the world. And for this girl, Brittany, to blurt that out, I don't know she whose balls. She had her balls, somebody else's balls, and my dog Coco's balls all attached to her at one time for her to blurt out some shit like that. Because she's lucky that I wasn't on the floor or I didn't hear her. Because had it been heard by me, it would have been a serious problem. And here's the thing. He's saying that I told him, oh... It's going to be a fight. First of all, I don't say shit like that. It's going to be a fight. It's either there's going to be a problem or I'm about to whip your ass. I don't use the word fight. Oh, I'm going to fight you. Oh, there's going to be a fight. That's some, like some lame elementary school shit to say. I don't say that. I'm grown. And what I'm going to tell you is it ain't about to be a fight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to whip your ass. So luckily for her and him, I didn't say I'm about to whip her ass. What I did say was there's going to be a problem. And then you could take that as you want to take it. But like I said, there's going to be a problem. So, I've been treated unjustly, my daughter has been treated unjustly, and I'm just not understanding it. I'm not a racist, my brother is mixed, my grandson is mixed, my best friend is, um, one of my best friends in New York, she is white, you know what I mean? I just don't really get it, like, what the hell is going on with the world? So what I had to do in return is I had to call a lawyer, um, because you're not going to just fire me, and, and you can't treat people like this, I had to call an employment lawyer attorney unfortunately they don't want to take the case and then i called the cochran firm johnny cochran firm because they came up in google they don't want to take it i'm not really sure what the hell is going on but this is like an unjust you cannot get away with treating people like this and this is there is a discrimination law there are discrimination laws wrongfully terminated due to racial discrimination or and such yes okay had we been in another place of employment the bitch would have got fired for saying you're your nigger mother. She would have got terminated on the spot and I would have still had my job. But this privately owned business, I guess they feel like they can just do as they please and get away with it. And it's sad because here it all, here it is, we all bleed the same, we all cry the same, we all work hard just the same, okay? We only difference of us, all of us in this world, regardless of what race you are, is our race. That's it. Other than that, we're all the same person. Our organs, our hearts, everything. We're all the same person. We're all the same. We just got a little bit of darker skin or a little bit of lighter skin. That's it. And then people want to go ahead and put titles on it. To me, honestly, there shouldn't be anything with a title. Black, white, Spanish, Korean. There shouldn't be a title. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, in the world that we live in, it is. Everybody has a title, and it's sad, okay? But it's really pathetic, and it's really sad when you have somebody that worked hard, and we got this girl here at the workplace who didn't call me a nigger mother. She didn't have, like, 15 chances. I didn't caught her going in the boss's drawer as soon as he went outside to smoke a break, looking at people's checks. I caught her and had to tell on her about that. You know, she's had millions of chances. Me, I've never had any chances because I've never done anything. And I don't say, I'm not saying I deserve a chance. Um, you don't have to give me a chance because there was nothing that I did incorrect or improper by saying um, there's going to be a problem. You know what I mean? If you want to take it as a threat, take it as a threat. But, yeah, 
But they kept her like, what the hell? What what type of shit is this we on? You know what I mean? Now you want me to meet you somewhere so I can give you your keys? What, you don't want me to come to the office and bring it because you, you're afraid of what I'm going to do to that girl? Yeah, I have had it in my mind of what I can do to her because I can just run up on her and she wouldn't even expect it. Or I could just be standing outside while y'all out there smoking right in the parking lot watching you. I could... You don't own a parking lot. It's a free building. There's many different buildings, businesses in that building. Um, therapists, okay, there's a therapist in that building. I might just need to be going to that right about now. So I just, you know, I'm just like shocked and like like appalled. Like, wow. Your nigga mother, really? So anyway, now I'm in search of another lawyer because I'm not about to let them get away with this. I'm not. This is not fair. You don't treat people any other type of way. It doesn't matter if I'm black, Hispanic, Chinese, Asian, Indian. You don't treat people like that. And that is not what you say in the real world. You don't think that you can say whatever and then get away with it and just go back to work the next day. When you allow things like this to happen, what's going to happen is this bitch going to think she can say that to whoever. She she probably won't say that to whatever, to whatever. Because if she see me out in the street or in the parking lot, she she ain't gonna even come outside, okay? But when you allow shit like this to go down, they just continue and they feel like it's all right for them to do and it's all right for them to say. And shit like that is not cool and it don't ride and don't rock with me, you know? So I'm holding my temper down because for one, if I know if I go in there and just knock her out her seat and just start pounding on her like I would, then it ain't gonna look good for me. So the best way for me to do you is to kill you with the lawyer and just treat you like that and take you down. Though there's a part of me that want to knock her upside her damn head, okay? But, yeah, I'm going to just chill with that. And I'm just going to be professional about it. You know, it, it bothers me. It stressed me out the night that we got terminated. It really did. I cried because it's about to be the holidays. You know what I'm saying? I got, I, I, I'm a very conservative person. Thank God I save money. But it's about to be the holidays. Do you really think that anybody wants to go to their savings account because of some dumb broad who said some shit like this about your race to your child, okay? No, but it really distressed me and it really hurt my feelings a lot because of how I was just wrongfully treated and my daughter was wrongfully treated. The only reason why Tati got fired was because of me. So he fired her because I'm her mother. What type of shit is that? You know what I mean? What type of shit is that? So anyway, that is my experience from Friday of the work environment. Um... I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I am not going to let this get me down. I'm going to have a good Thanksgiving either way. But if you have any advice or suggestions, then go ahead and leave it below for me. Because I'll be more than glad to read it. Like always, like I read everything. But I, I really could use some team spirit right about now. Team April, okay? Team Muffins. So on that note, stay diva and delicious, And I'll be back soon. And have a happy Thanksgiving. And don't eat too much because I fly am. <laughs>